Welcome to this session of understanding how Swift RMA works. In this session, we are going to understand how relationship management application works. So what exactly is relationship management application? It's a service provided by Swift to manage the business relationship between financial institutions. Now let's try to understand this in a very simple way by taking the analogy of a mobile phone. Now we all know that we get a lot of unwanted calls on your cell. So what do we do? We block unwanted numbers so that we can ensure that these spam calls don't disturb us. So we block the contacts. Similarly, in Swift, we have the mechanism to block unwanted Swift messages. The only difference being that in the cell phone, we block what we don't want. Whereas in the context of Swift, we actually allow what we want. This is because in the context of Swift, what the list for allowing is much smaller than the list which we want to disallow. So the second line now starts making sense. It's actually a Swift mandated filter that was created to enable financial institutes to define which counterparties can send them FIN messages. Now let's take the simple example with three banks, A, B, and C all connected to the Swift Alliance. Now we have A's rule saying that A can receive messages from B. B says that it can receive from C. Now the first thing which comes to mind is that these are not symmetrical. So just because A can receive from B doesn't mean that B can receive from A. Similarly, C has got a rule that C can receive from either A and B. Now these rules are stored in the respective core banking of A, B, and C. Not only that, these rules are fed into the RMA. How it is fed, we are going to understand it in a subsequent slide. Now here the objective is that whenever a message is sent, let's assume that bank A tries to send a message to bank B, the filter at bank A gets applied and even if the message gets slipped into the Swift, Swift RMA ensures that the message doesn't get passed on to B because at past the mandate, B can receive only from C and nobody else. Similarly, if B wants to send a message to C, yes, it passes the filter in the B and it also passes the filter in Swift RMA. So C can receive the message from B. So if this is RMA, what is RMA plus? Now RMA plus is slightly more granular. So here the rule is much more fine tuned. It says it can receive from B and also it can receive only MD103 and 202. Whereas B says it can receive from C any message. C says it can receive from A only MT103, not even a 202, and B any message. So RM plus is much more granular. Does it apply for all messages? No. There are exceptions like the three series for FX, six series for commodity, and the nine series for debit credit transfers and uh, statements and free format MT999. So these are the messages which you cannot apply filter on. So let's try to understand this in a bit more detail how these authorizations are created. So let's assume that same two counterparties, counterparty A and counterparty B. Now A wants to create a rule saying that I authorize you to send me this message, right? So it tries to set up a filter that I can receive a message from B. Now this is actually an RMA plus because it actually specifies which message it can receive from B. Now, the admin user logs into the RMA portal of Swift through a file act interface. This authorization goes to the RMA application of B. The admin user of B logs into the RMA and then says, okay, I am fine with this rule which A has set up. Because I know A, I am willing to send messages to A. So once B approves, then only it gets stored into the RMA database as validated. So all the rules will get applied when message exchanges happen. Now, there are two things which, uh, operations which can be done. Now, when this authorization request comes to B, B has every right to reject it, saying that, no, I don't want to send to A, I'm not going to accept this filter of A. The second one is that after a few months, A can decide to change his mind, says that, no, I no longer want to receive messages from B. So A sends a revocation of the original request. And of course, this also needs to be authorized by B. 
So we have seen what is RMA, and of course, we now get a sense of how RMA helps. It actually reduces the risk of fraudulent transactions by limiting to those counterparties whom you trust. And of course, it, there is a better control over the traffic. Hope this gives you a very good understanding of RMA. In the next session, we are going to understand more about ISO translators. Thank you and keep watching.